What exactly do you think will be in the budget? What will be we be left with? I, I don't think that the, the, the Italian government will back down from what we saw thus far. So 2.4%? So I would say so. I think it's unlikely. I mean, there could be some cosmetics, but it's unlikely they will uh, come back uh, on that. Because there, are, there is very little room. If they come back on that, uh, if, I ba if they back down, there will be not much left uh, to do what, what they promised to their electorate. Okay, but what, what does it mean for actually, you know, going forward? Does it mean they're itching for a fight with the European Union? Is there a secret plan to also take it to the end of the euro, or is that far-fetched? Well, I would say it's, uh, it's unavoidable. The fight with the European Commission, it's quite difficult to avoid, I think. And, you know, even when they um, proposed uh, initially their, their uh, 2.4 target for this, not only for 19, but also for 20 and 21, it was clear that they were taking up, uh, taking a, a battle picking yeah. a battle with the European Commission. Now, if, it is, if they are right or wrong, that's another issue, but no. I think this is what's going on. But, but, Jane, why is it a fight? I mean, so the rule is 3%, right? This is a finance minister that at the end of the day has two bosses, Luigi Di Maio and Matteo Salvini, to answer to, and he kind of guided the market to 2%. Had he not guided the market to 2%, would the market have taken it this badly? Well, I mean, the, 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 Italy is a highly indebted country, and, and this is the issue. It's got a huge amount of debt, and, and therefore the EU Commission says, well, for a country with a, a large amount of debt, they're supposed to be progressively redu reducing the budget to, uh, deficit target, therefore to get a handle on, on, on the debt. Uh, I, I think the, the issue for the markets is, A, they're not doing that. They've raised it to 2.4%. And also, where is the structural reform? Because ultimately, if you don't have the structural reform, you're not going to raise the productivity, and therefore you're not really going to deal with the debt. Right. So it, it's about the long-term solutions that this government, as far as the market's concerned, has not put, them, put in place. But these are campaign promises, right? So for how does the euro take all of this? Well, I think we've seen really over the last couple of months, the euro hasn't taken to this really quite well. And, and I think also from the euro's perspective, there, there is a bigger issue as well, because we've seen populism rising in other parts of, of Europe too. And, and I think what's, what's quite important, and actually one of the Italian politi uh, politicians raised this last weekend, there are the European parliamentary elections next spring and if we look back to 2014 those European parliamentary elections already brought a, uh, a movement towards the far left and the far right. So, we, so clearly that the centre ground was still dominant, is still dominant, but there was, there was a movement which you could then argue was perhaps uh, a signal of what were to happen in, in, in the uh, national elections in the last few years. So those elections are going to be interesting. That could really uh, change the, um, the sway potentially of, of the European uh, Parliament as well. So there's an awful lot to watch, an awful lot of parameters, but uh, you know, the market doesn't, doesn't like any movement away from um, uh, prudence uh, and reform. Um, Luigi, are we going to see fresh elections in Italy? And if it were a the, you know, Salvini uh, government on his own, what would that budget look like? Well, uh, I would say that, uh, of course, as you know, there are, there is a, this is already an electoral budget because elections are coming next year and they are uh, European elections. So European say elections, that's, right. Uh, that, that's enough. There is also a chance there will be some political elections, earlier political elections. I would say I would not rule that out. And uh, I would say that... In so if we do have fresh Italian yeah. elections, yes. Matteo Salvini would probably get a majority. I would say so. I would say so. Probably he will run again uh, together with uh, the other, the junior party, now junior party, the Berlusc Berlusconi's Forza Italia. But there will be a really junior party, mm -hmm. uh, I think, to them. Yeah. So I think Salvini will dictate the agenda, I would say. Uh, do you worry about a downgrade for Italy and what would that mean for the banking system? Yeah, I would say I, I do worry about that uh, uh, because I think that the rating agencies will do what we all are doing. It is they, are, they will check the numbers and frankly it's difficult to see these numbers add up. And on top of that, as Jane was saying, uh, this budget is not tackling the structural issues that Italy has. Now, to be honest, uh, this is not something which was tackled even by previous governments. So this is not a novelty. It's not that the, the previous governments did not indulge in fiscal profligacy. I mean, uh, the primary budget uh, uh, corrected by, by the cycle deteriorated under the Renzi and the Gentiloni uh, governments by 2.5 percentage points. So you can say that these governments have eaten up uh, the QE dividend as the previous governments eaten up the euro dividend uh, 20 years ago. So, it's a difficult situation and I think uh, it, in this context I think a downgrade is difficult to avoid. The, the main thing will be if there will be a, a negative outlook or not and I would say that 
chances are there. We, we shall see. It's, it's not, uh, it's not uh, the, uh, done deal. But of course, for the banking system, this will be a major problem.